Hello everyone, it is October 5th, 2021, it's Tuesday, it's Harp Tuesday! Welcome to this week's episode. So today I just wanted to do kind of a short episode talking about a fingering rule or concept called only placing in one direction or not playing out of order. So I wanted to try to describe that in depth somewhat to also give you a really accurate definition of what a bracket means in terms of fingering notation and to show is an example how that applies to that rule pattern from the Bach uh, prelude number one in C major. So this idea of only placing in one direction is basically that what we're trying to do when we're connecting is to train the fingers that if we play the thumb and two is on the string, we'll play two next. And once we play two, if three is, you know, we, if we're going down, if we play the one and two, and three is on the string, we'll play that next. And then we'll play the thumb next, but the fourth finger next. So in other words, let's say we're playing this note and then we're playing a note that's higher on it on the staff, maybe this note. Great, we can place that. But then let's say we're playing a note that's lower than that second note, say this. So instead of placing three, two, one on C, E, D and going, we would go place these because they're going up one direction. And now we're going back down again to a note that's lower than this current note. So we get to place it. So that's kind of the idea of only placing in one direction in a nutshell. And again, the primary reason to do so is to make it so that the fingers uh, don't get confused in terms of what is going on next. Now, like all fingering rules, this gets broken. So I would say 90% of the time you're going to follow this, but sometimes you don't. A classic example is something like this, where the only way of playing a pattern like that, uh, like a, a note, a higher note, a middle note, an even higher note, playing four, two, three, one by placing all of them ahead of time is a fantastic way to play it. And of course it means we're playing out of order because normally after playing four, if three is on the string, we want to play three. So these rules do get broken. Um, and of course, yeah, there's no finger in place to go, stop, oh, no, 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 not allowed. Um, but there is also a solid reason behind this, this rule. And so I would suggest, as I say, following it, you know, almost all the time. So I want to give you an example of that, starting with a little pattern like this. Of course, we can come off each time but it would be more effective to connect back down some notes. So what should we do? How should we connect them? Before I talk about that, let's talk about brackets because brackets are such a useful uh, notation, a very specific fingering notation. So brackets are put over one, uh, sorry, two or more notes and would look something like this. Kind of sloppy, but anyway, something along those lines. And what a bracket means is that you're not, you're not, you are not allowed, that you are not allowed to play any of the notes under the bracket until they're all placed. Or to put it another way, you see a bracket and what you want to do is scan ahead to see all the notes that are under that bracket because you're not allowed to play that first note or let's see, here's four notes, for example, we might have a bracket. You're not allowed to play that first note until you have placed all the notes under the bracket. So it's partly just a visual cue for you because otherwise we might see the start of, you know, the start of these four notes here and say, oh, okay, I'll find the first two and I'll find the rest of them as I go along, right? And that's just, just it's bad, bad practice and, and not very efficient. Whereas by having a bracket over those four, we say, oh, right, here's this first one. Oh, no, I, I'm not allowed to play it until I found all the notes and ideally kind of finding them as one motion. So that's what a bracket means. Don't start that notes under the bracket until you found all of them. Great. So let's go back to this top line example and talk about how we would finger it. So I'll throw some fingerings in, right? It's going to be three, two, one, three, two, one, three, two, one, etc. And so according to this fingering rule, we have a C and then an E. Great. So we're going up. Our direction is going up. G is still going up. We can place all of those. And our next note is a C, but we've already got that place. So 
we don't even have to worry. We, we, we can't place it ahead of time. So that we can put that bracket that I've drawn in, we can put that bracket there over that three, two, one. We're not gonna play any of them until we found all of them. Play the third finger. Do we put it back? We know we are gonna play that C after playing the thumb. Well, we're still going up and this C is lower than these notes. So we're going up, we can't place a note that's going down. And here, I think intuitively, we wouldn't place that because it would just feel kind of awkward. Now, what do we do here? We want to keep connecting. We've gotten to the thumb. And so here's where I think sometimes, if you're not aware of this placement rule, what you might find yourself doing is placing two and three as one unit. You might go. But let's, let's think about the, the, that idea of placing only, only one direction. We've gotten to the thumb. Next note is the C. We can place that, right? That means we're going down. We don't want to place two because we want to train the hands that if we play the thumb, we'll play two next. So if we were going... If, for example, if there was an extra E right in here, and these weren't triplets, then of course we would, we would place three, two, one on the way up and one, two, three on the way down. But in our actual example, we only place one and three. And we can put a bracket there, and oh, it's an overlapping bracket because you can see this G here. There's the tail end of the first bracket as well as the start of the new bracket. But all that means, remember, the bracket really only affects when we start it. That we see a bracket, we gotta find all those notes. We're not allowed to play that first note until we find everything under the bracket. And the fact that this is thumb is still part of this old bracket, we've already fulfilled the requirements of that first bracket. So now here's this overlapping bracket, this new bracket that says, oh, before we play the thumb, we've got to place the third finger. Great. We play the thumb and now we're going back up again. So now we are allowed to place two and one as, as, as one unit. We can place them and have three, two, one. Placed and ready to go. And so we can just we can just repeat that forever, right? That we we keep going three, two, connect down just to the third finger, then place two and one. And again, among other things, what it does is it helps distinguish between doing that and. adding that E in on the way back down. And, and so there's a different different feel and that this is just one of them, yeah, it's helpful, it's helpful. So same thing can be applied if we have a bigger group, like a four, three, two, one, right? This is all gonna be four, three, two, one. We could place the first four because they're all in one direction, great. Then we get to the top. Might be tempting to place all these notes, which we could if we were going back down again, but only one direction, this note to that note, these are, are, are coming in up now, so it's going down, that's all we can place, and then we can place three, two, one. So again, we'd have a bracket over these two notes, and then a new bracket over the one, two, four, three, two, one. Great, so that's, that's, that's it in a nutshell. Um, and this particular pattern is the one that I think catches people out the most in terms of ending up going or and again I can understand the temptation because it feels kind of efficient let's place all these as one unit but it's uh, it's it's not it's not worth it instead we place all of these as one unit, the three, two, one, the, the, the top notes rather than the bottom notes so we can continue to follow this fingering order. And I wanted to just touch on the Bach uh, prelude number one. Because you can see the right hand is doing that little pattern ad nauseum, right? Whether it's three, two, one or four, two, one, depending on the spacing. And here you can see in this arrangement, you can actually see nicely typeset brackets written out there that we won't, we just connect down to the third finger. And I think it's kind of easy to hear here another reason 
why we follow this rule, and that is it actually lets the notes ring longer. So this second finger note, the C, we get to hear that instead of, right, if we go, you can hear how that gets stopped rather than, sounds much better rather than, So there is a there is a actual auditory reason for doing that as well as I think the physical one of training our fingers to know that if the thumb plays and two is on the string it plays next so that's why we want to have three on the string so we know that it's gonna play next and blah, blah, blah. Um, but yeah hope that's useful hope that's somewhat clear in terms of uh, that idea that fingering rule of only placing one direction or, or not playing out of order except when you do right. Because again, there are exceptions, but as I say, I would say 90% of the time or more, we are following that rule. So hope that's useful, hope that's helpful, and uh, I will see you in two weeks' time. Cheers.